This is 7 News Adelaide with Gertie Sperling. Good afternoon. A terrified Adelaide bus driver has described having a knife pulled on him after being confronted by three youths in the northern suburbs. As Lauren Rose reports, the victim suffered a hand injury in the late night ordeal. Having just wrestled the knife from the youths, the scared bus driver came here to the Arndale Interchange to wait for police. He'd been confronted by the suspects, believed to be about 15, at Angle Park. This CCTV shows them around 10 o'clock waiting for the bus to pick them up. Its driver reporting that just two stops later, the trio got off and were messing with the vehicle's doors and fuel hatch before one of them boarded again armed with the weapon. I did fight with them and uh, in that fight I just stole the knife. I was scared. He's going to put in my back. I was scared there. Police warmed the area and found two boys hanging out at the same stop where the suspects had got on 20 minutes earlier, but they were quickly found to be not involved. This afternoon, police had been patrolling the area. The police helicopter and dog squad were also brought in to assist the search. Almost 150 homes in the hills have been left without power after a car slammed into a stoby pole at Mount Barker. Emergency crews were called to Springs Road just before 11 o'clock. A woman in her 30s had careered off the road bringing down power lines. She was taken to hospital and treated for minor injuries. Police are questioning a Salisbury North man over an early morning hit run crash which saw five people taken to hospital. It happened at Waterloo Corner around 3.30. It's alleged the man ran a red light in his Hyundai, slamming into a Commodore which rolled, trapping the five people inside. They were all taken to the Lyle McEwen, but no one was seriously injured. Police say the 25-year-old Hyundai driver took off but was found nearby. The Premier's kicked off a three-day economic blitz of the Spencer Gulf by striking a deal to help the Wayala Steelworks go green. Under the plan, the site would be partly powered by hydrogen, drawn from a new $600 million plant set to be built nearby. We are talking about thousands of jobs. Well-paid, secure, highly remunerated jobs. That's what is at the end of the line for us here. I think the South Australia has all the ingredients to be a winner. All going to plan, the hydrogen plant should be operational in 2026. Police are ramping up their search to find the bodies of Sydney couple Jesse Baird and Luke Davies after they were allegedly murdered by Constable Bo Lamar. This as the police commissioner comes under fire for not speaking publicly about their alleged killer. Here's Robert Avadia. Well, the police tape is no longer here, but investigators continue to walk in and out of the Paddington Terrace in which Jesse Baird and Luke Davis are thought to have been murdered earlier this week. They continue to retrieve evidence, but the most important evidence yet to be retrieved is the couple's bodies. Now, Seven News understands police have been told they were buried in a creek, which is why divers have been working hard over the past 24 hours. Recent heavy rain, though, has certainly not helped. Their alleged killer is police officer Bo Lamar. He has not divulged where the bodies are. He is alleged to have sent text messages purportedly from his victims, making out they were still alive, to cover his tracks and allegedly buy him some more time. Lamar's service pistol has been forensically tested and a projectile was found here in the home. Police alleging he used it to kill his former lover and Jesse's new partner, Luke. That has rocked the police force. If a person was found to have actually taken a firearm and used it for his own means, not associated with police work, uh, then the courts would uh, take a very, very dim view of that because um, they'd have to because otherwise police officers will feel tempted at times when they're not happy to use those particular firearms. So I would expect the courts would really come down heavy if we were looking at a sentence for using it. Because a police officer is the accused murderer here, internal sources have been critical of Police Commissioner Karen Webb that she has not spoken publicly about this. You can expect more from her in the coming days and you can also expect a possible tribute to the victims at Sydney's Mardi Gras parade next Saturday. Saturday night. That is being considered, but will only happen, we're told, if organisers are convinced it is in good taste and appropriate. 
A man has been charged for fatally assaulting a security guard south of Sydney. It's understood the 31-year-old was asked to leave the hotel when he allegedly lashed out at the security guard. Paramedics performed CPR on him, but he couldn't be saved. The security guard's just going about his business and there's patrons in there having a good time and anything like this, the security guard has ended up losing his life. It's just a tragedy all round. The man was refused bail and will face court tomorrow. Donald Trump has won South Carolina's primary vote, defeating Nikki Haley in her home state, 59 to her 39 per cent. The win means the former president is one step closer to becoming the Republicans' nominee in the race to the White House. Tim Lester is there. As election nights go, this one was done in the blink of an eye. Major news organisations had announced the winner in South Carolina two minutes after the polls closed at 7 o'clock. It is 7pm here on the East Coast and the polls are officially closed. The Fox News decision desk can now project that former President Donald Trump will win the state's GOP primary. And within 10 minutes, the winner, Donald Trump, was on stage here to celebrate. Wow. That is really something. This was a little sooner than we anticipated. The South Carolina primary especially important to Trump because his one remaining rival for the Republican nomination is a former governor here, Nikki Haley. I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory. And I want to thank the people of South Carolina for using the power of your voice. The question now, whether Haley clawing back what some pollsters had predicted would be a giant win for Donald Trump is enough to keep her campaign alive. No matter what happens in South Carolina, I would continue to run for president. In an ordinary election year here, the primary fight would not even have reached its peak. There's Michigan's primary in a couple of days and the big Super Tuesday of many primaries in about a fortnight. But this year, it's looking all bar over and Americans are resigning themselves to a Biden v Trump election in November. Western leaders have rallied around Kyiv, meeting with President Vladimir Zelensky to mark the second anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion. The Italian Premier and the Belgian and Canadian Prime Ministers were among those in attendance. As part of their visit, Canada pledged $3 billion in military and economic aid this year, while Italy promised much-needed long-range weapons. Adelaide's Rhea Ripley has taken out the Women's World Championship at wrestling's biggest ever Elimination Chamber event held in Perth. More than 50,000 fans attended. Monique Dirks has the story. The WA state government won't say how much it forked out to coax the WWE circus to come to town, but say it was worth every cent. Perth showed up to witness one for the history books with more than 52,000 people filling Optus Stadium seats. The biggest crowd for WWE Elimination Chamber ever. There were chants, boos and roars of applause as the bulked up athletes had their hair pulled and their faces kicked. Adelaide's Rhea Ripley took out the women's world championship. Western Australia we turn up. When we know people have made an effort we'll make an effort back and I think uh, that's why WA is such a great destination. Other cities it may be just something that's in their diary but over here Western Australia gets behind it. But Perth was the main event. The tourism ads dotted throughout the broadcast were designed to make sure the state feels the economic impact for a long time to come. The broadcast reached more than 1 billion people across 165 countries, plugging Perth to the world. South Australians are feeling the bulk billing sting after the break, the new report shedding light on out-of-pocket expenses. Paying nursing and education students on placement, the recommendations that could transform universities. The body of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny finally returns home to his family. And a billionaire and the Prime Minister among a select few treated to a private Katy Perry gig. Finding an Adelaide GP who bulk bills is becoming even harder. A new report shows no gap consultations have declined in all but one SA federal electorate in the past year. Spence in the northern suburbs saw the biggest drop, with the number of bulk billing clinics down by almost 30%.
But in better news, gap payments here are generally lower than other states. South Australia is still one of the least expensive, if not the least expensive states to go and see a GP if you're not being bulk billed. But we are seeing those costs increase year on year. In the news at six, what doctors say needs to be done so more patients can be bulk billed. A review of Australia's tertiary education sector has found it's in need of a major overhaul. The report makes dozens of recommendations, but they'll cost billions of dollars and take decades to implement. Rob Scott reports from Canberra. Described as a blueprint for higher education, the university's Accord report charts a path for reform over the next 25 years. Contained in its 400 pages are 47 recommendations to help Australia fill critical skills shortages and realise its economic potential into the future. A plan that really is about changing lives and changing nations. At its core is a recommendation to increase the number of Australians with a university or TAFE qualification, up from 60% to 80 by the middle of the century. Key to achieving that is getting more students from poor backgrounds, First Nations and country areas to enrol. It is absolutely essential to our success as a country. The report suggests the number of places available for domestic students must double in the next 25 years. But it's not just about getting students to start a degree, they must also get the help they need to finish. The review recommends the government invest in a pay-to-learn scheme, where students who have to do work placements as part of teaching and nursing courses are paid to stop so-called placement poverty. If you're a nursing student, you know, you're spending 800 hours working working in a hospital where you're not paid. If you're a teaching student, about 600 hours. The report says a fairer HEX, or HELP system as it's now known, is also needed, including making sure a person's debt doesn't grow faster than their wages. Implementing the reforms will cost billions of dollars and take decades, but the minister says it's vital to get the ball rolling on some of them as a matter of urgency. The body of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny has been handed over to his mother more than a week after his death. The Russian opposition leader and Kremlin critic died in an Arctic prison, serving a sentence on charges denounced as political retribution. The details of his funeral arrangements are yet to be determined. His mother had been fighting for custody of his body. Fresh from seeing Taylor Swift live in concert, pop star Katy Perry has put on a show of her own at the home of billionaire businessman Anthony Pratt in Melbourne. The Prime Minister was among those attending the exclusive event. Outside, local families gathered, seizing the chance to attend a free concert of sorts. <laughs> The singer was reportedly paid a fee of more than one and a half million dollars for the show. Not bad at all. Still to come on 7 News, ABBA will have the latest in sport as power star Sam Pal Pepper faces a nervous wait after his bump concussed a key crow. And the Aussies look for a series sweep in the final T20 against New Zealand. Good afternoon. Power enforcer Sam Powell Pepper will find out his fate from the MRO tomorrow after his high bump concussed Crows defender Mark Keane in the pre-season showdown on Friday night. With the AFL's focus on protecting the head, the midfielder could be sent straight to the tribunal, which attracts a minimum three-match suspension, meaning he'd miss the start of the Premiership season. New Richmond coach Adam Uze has his players believing they can bounce back into finals contention. The versatile Liam Baker is preparing to make the move from defence to the midfield and has been impressed by the club's pre-season. I think we'll surprise a few this year. Um, um, everyone was pretty quick to write us off, but like I said before, new, new voice delivering a similar message. So we know a lot of the stuff, but all this new stuff as well um, is making us that 10% better. The Tigers face Collingwood on Tuesday in their final pre-season hit-out. Dustin Martin, Tim Taranto and Dylan Grimes are all expected to play. Steve Smith's hopes of earning a place in Australia's T20 World Cup squad took another hit, out for just four against New Zealand today. Oh yes, it's a little edge. I thought he might have played and missed. That was the reaction from Smith, but that's a beauty from Milne. In Australia's last game before the tournament, it reached four for 118 before rain ended its innings early in Auckland. Set 126 off 10 overs to win. New Zealand fell 27 runs short. Australia securing a 3-0 series sweep. 
Tony Gustafsson wants the Matildas to be more clinical, despite virtually assuring Olympic qualification. A wasteful 70 minutes against Uzbekistan was ended by Michelle Heyman's first goal for the Matildas since 2016. Heyman, it's in! Michelle Heyman's done it! And the story is complete. Mary Fowler's special solo goal and Caitlin Ford's cameo sealed a 3-0 victory. Our conversion rate must have been really bad. I mean, we could have scored. We left a lot of goals out there today. We need to admit that. That needs to be better on Wednesday. They return to Melbourne for the second leg of the qualifier on Wednesday in front of their 12th consecutive sellout game. Adelaide United's finals hopes are fading fast with its fourth loss in five games. The Reds conceded two goals in the opening half at home against the Western Sydney Wanderers. Ben Halloran was red carded in the 75th minute and despite being down to 10 men, Luka Jovanovic got one back but it was too little, too late. Now I suppose tonight he summed our whole season up. Um, we give, you know, you know, the two goals they scored, you know, two good crosses but, you know, we've got to defend them better. And then, you know, we play some good football but we don't make the most of the opportunities that we create for ourselves. United's now winless in its last five and eight points out of the top six with nine games to go. Manchester City's one point off the top of the Premier League after a 1-0 win over Bournemouth. Manchester United's 89th minute equaliser wasn't enough. Fulham stole a 2-1 victory in stoppage time. It won't be! And Fulham look to have stolen it at the death! Third place Arsenal thrashed Newcastle 4-1. Aston Villa stayed fourth with a 4-2 victory over Nottingham Forest. A year-long Red Bull Walkinshaw duel looks likely in the supercars. After a messy opening lap of race two at the Bathurst 500, Chaz Mostert had his Mustang on course for victory before a late pit stop mishap ruined his chances. Get the wheel on. Get the wheel on. Hurry. 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 <laughs> That left Will Brown out in front and he raced to his first victory for his new team, completing a clean sweep of the opening round for Red Bull with teammate Brock Feeney. More in our main bulletin at six with Smitho. And from what I know about cars, I reckon you need all four wheels on the <laughs> I know, before you can go. That poor mechanic keep you coughing it. <laughs> oh, coughing it from everyone, as you should. One job, you had one job. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. We've got some very warm temperatures on the way ahead of the first day of autumn. I'll have the details after the break. Stay with us. Smithson has our main bulletin at six. And Smitho, what have you got? Well, Gertie, our hard-working bus drivers often find themselves in harm's way. We know that. Help track down armed offenders after a terrifying ordeal in the northwestern suburbs. The Premier's a swifty one minute and on an economic mission to the Upper Spencer Gulf the next we cross live there. Finding it hard to locate a bog billing doctor. Why South Australians are feeling the pain. And in flashback, changing attitudes to smoking, how SA's led the way to kissing tobacco goodbye. One of the greatest endings to a story you will ever see. Don't miss it. OK, thanks, Smith. I'll take your word for it. It looks like a scene out of a movie. Lanterns inscribed with wishes painting the sky in Pingxi District, north of Taiwan. The Lantern Festival of New Taipei is a tradition that takes place 15 days after Chinese New Year. Historically, lanterns were used in military communications to pass information on to troops. Now it's an international tourist attraction. Very impressive. To the weather now, and it was a gorgeous sunny day in the city. After a low of 13, we hit a top of 31 around 3.40 this afternoon. Right now, it's still 29 degrees. Ex-tropical cyclone Lincoln is triggering showers and thunderstorms in Perth, currently 21 degrees there. It's a partly cloudy but warm afternoon in Brisbane. Mostly sunny in Sydney. Right now it's 24. A touch warmer in Melbourne. Cool and cloudy in Hobart though, sitting on 23 at the moment. A high pressure system's moving into the bite. That'll allow the heat to build here before a broad trough triggers a mild change. Western parts of the state will feel the cooler conditions by Tuesday evening. Dry across the state tomorrow, looking very hot and sunny in the far north. It's tipped to reach 40 in Marbury, 39's the top for Cooper Pedy, 38 for Roxby. Afternoon sea breezes are expected further south. Still a warm day for most, hot inland. Cloudy and 25 for Port Lincoln, 36 for Port Augusta, 29 for Clare, 31 and cloudy in Renmark, 28 for Murray Bridge, just 22 for Victor, 25 for Kingscote, windy in Edithburg, 24 there and for Mount Gambier. 
There's a flood warning for the Diamantina River and severe heatwave conditions are still impacting the northwest pastoral district. In the city, down to 15 degrees overnight, 29 is the forecast top. It'll be a partly cloudy day. More hot weathers to come, though. The details in the full forecast tonight. That's all the news for now. Mike will have all the day's top stories at 6 o'clock. From me, bye Stream 7 News anytime, live and on demand on 7 Plus. And with 7news.com.au, you'll know the news.